Hello, Cardboard Geek here, and uh, this is another unboxing video, and this time it's of the Judge Red Helter Skelter, uh, designed by Martin Wallace and produced by Osprey Games. And this is a reskin of Wildlands, which was a miniatures combat game, mostly card-based, but done so it's quite light. Um, re relatively well thought of, but it's, you know, good when you want a kind of combat where you don't want a lot of overthinking. Uh, sometimes nice light. I mean, I think if I remember it rightly, it can play in about 40 minutes, so that's quite nice. Uh, from what I've heard, anyway. Uh, as yet, I haven't had to play it. And the reason why is, this has been on my list for a while. And I haven't got it previously because uh, it, the local situation with COVID um, and lockdown and isolation, I have been left in a situation where I have to rely a, lot, a little bit on some solo gaming um, now and then. Um, so this did not have a solo mode. It is going to have a solo mode. It will have a solo mode um, this coming Thursday. Uh, today is the 25th of May in 2020, so to give you an idea. Um, and that will bring in the Dark Judges, which is a wonderful 2000 AD set of villains, uh, who you can also use, if you want, as a faction in a multiplayer version. And the premise for this is based on a story, uh, for in 2000 AD, and you can see all the little 2000 AD-isms here, like the credit card here of people only with skulled robots. Very 2000 AD. Um, and the fabric of reality has shattered. Mega City 1 is overrun with beings from the past and present, and the altogether alien, from space-faring mutants to raging barbarians, buildings are phasing in and out of existence, and monstrous creatures terrorise the streets everywhere. Death and destruction rule supreme. It's Helter Skelter. Um, so... Very much 2080 artwork. The theme's quite strong in this. Uh, my understanding is the previous Wildlands was a little light on the theme. It was sort of like gave it a generic um, fantasy situation. Um, so, oh, um, and they've got another game as well called Cursed Earth, which is a solo card based game that can also be played competitively or cooperatively. So that's quite nice. And they're also, Elspray are famous also for Undaunted Normandy. If you like war games, from what I can tell, I haven't played it personally, but from all reports, a good choice. Right, so let's put that aside. We have a rule book, nice and clear, it's good size. Well, fits the box anyway. A uh, good, clear reference on the back. Um, I understand the cards are icon related. Um, and it gives a clear explanation of what all those are on the back, uh, whilst keeping a taste of uh, 2008. Let's have a look through quickly. So there are a couple of maps, which we'll get to in a minute. The Hall of Justice and Dan Tanner need a blight and block. Um, each map has 40 sections on it uh, for deployment and placing the fragments of reality, which is part of the goal for this. You have to score five points. A point being uh, either a casualty on the opposition that you've caused, or one of the shards of the fabric of reality. Yeah, if you get five, you win. Um, and we've got some uh, breakdown of the characters. I'll come back to that because, obviously, we're going to have the crux of the game, which is the miniatures in a minute. But this is the boards. So first we have the Hall of Justice. Um... Very typical, uh, there we go, 2080 style artwork all over that. Um, and the other side, it should be the Dantana and in a Blighton block. Um, these areas are flight areas, um, so these are obviously choke points. Very few characters can fly in this, so there's definitely choke points across the map for this. Very, very highly coloured, bringing uh, all the style. Um, I think they may have been slightly recoloured. Let's get this folded up. But for the positive, they make them pop a bit more. So now we get to the meat and drink, which is, let's face it, the figures. So what have we got in here? So in here we have ten figures in one and, oh, it's double layer. Everything else in the bottom. We'll get to that in a moment as well. Um, let's bring this forward. 
So we take that lid off and put that up there. So we have some nice figures here. We have, this looks like the judges to me. So we have, they've got a slight ink wash over them. Just bring a little bit more detail out. There we go, get that in the thing. And that one's Judge Giant with his shotgun. Um, Side Judge Cassandra Anderson. Give a little uh, side flavor, enables us here to minimize the opponent's strategies a little and uh, block. Chief Judge Hershey. Um, she did eventually make it all the way up there, even though she was once Dred's trainee and partner. Uh, the man himself, Judge Dredd, he is the law. Uh, and uh, a slight rogue to the bunch in the form of uh, Mean Machine Angel. My understanding is in melee combat, he really does dial it up to four on this game. So... Um, can definitely see that happening. There's a little odd choice there having Meme Machine in there, but um, I have to admit, I've not read the graphic novel, so it might be part of the graphic novel premise. And uh, the other ones we've got is uh, the mutants, uh, bounty hunters, known as Strontium Dogs. So we have, it's a particular favourite of my cousins, actually. So we have Johnny Alpha, uh, his weird witchy mutant eyes. Uh, Durham Red, his... One-time girlfriend, stroke, sidekick, vampire, mutant, uh, bounty hunter, uh, quite vicious. Um, I understand her, she actually has a special ability of vampirism, which means that when she injures people, she gets better. So she's going to be quite tough to defeat. And for those Scots, the Scottish mutant known as Midden Face McNulty, complete with his lumps on his head. Uh, always ready for a Rami. And uh, Johnny's erstwhile Viking companion from back in time. Jo uh, Wolf Stern Hanna, Hammer, sorry, with their happy stick. And uh, the odd one in the bunch. And interesting, because he's not much of a combatant, but De Gronk. Um, as Wolf would put it. Uh, who has a very poor heart seize. Um, but he's very good at healing people, so that obviously puts a bit more life in the party. And they come with decks. I'm going to have a look through those decks in a bit, because we want to go to the bottom first. So let's move all this out. Take that out as well. And in fact, let's move the box to one side. And up some cubes. Um... Hmm. Pandemic appears to have lost its red cubes here. We have some nice... I um, think they might be 8mm clear plastic cubes. Red plastic, uh, which is life. Possibly I'm a little disappointed by this, but I believe these are the shards, which are plastic discs. Um, possibly like to have seen them as crystals um, in the original Wildlands. Uh, the similar target points were all crystals, so that would have been nice. Um, and these are for one particular character who will get to in a minute. Uh, Shlan McGroff. And we have coloured bases, so you can see which team they're on clearly when they're on the board, without having to actually try and look at the sculpt. <coughs> Sorry about that. Right. So these are location cards, which are what help with the deployment. Uh, you get several of these cards, and the final five, uh, you get to place one of your opponent's uh, crystals down. Uh, so it kind of like you have a small amount of tactical control over where the other people have got to go, and also where your people will appear. Um, they're, they're not really much more than that, so I'm not even going to bother to open them. They're 1 to 40, all in a number. So, right, so to here. Now, this is where I'm going to need the book because I don't know some of these characters. Um, Charms, I can do. But this is Nikolai Dante's group. And we have... Oops. Clumsy. Victor Romanoff, who can transform into an eagle. So, he's one of the flying characters. Um, apparently, Nikolai Dante and his allies are well-versed in war and chaos. Hardening the battle between the Makarovs and the Romanovs, they rely on speed to close their foes, 
trading, and in this case, trade range from LA Pro S. Uh, we have, oh, who's this? Sarina Jena Makarov, um, who was apparently a born leader. And this will be Nikolai Dante. I do like his coat. A nice little cavalry jacket there, light cavalry jackets. A sabre on the back. Um, so I'm guessing he's more, uh, oh, this one might be more than Melee actually. What's her name? Elena Kurakin. Hmm, a little bit like Ileana Kuriakin. Um, I wonder how much of that is a carryover. And uh, who's this? This is Lulu Romanoff. <laughs> I have a friend who calls herself Lulu. Um, apparently she can create swarms of demons to overcome her foes, so definitely not a woman to be messed with. Um, and final faction uh, from... King. Now, this faction technically only has four figures, but it has five figures to represent them for a reason. Because it has Akko, his slight little dwarf friend, always trying to peek up any women's uh, clothing. He's definitely uh, a reprobate, I think is the best term for him. But uh, nice big ears on him, and uh, yeah, I can see him having some nice sly attacks. And then we have the hero himself, Schlamuk Roth, in his perfectly normal warrior form um, and he and his, as his slay stack grows I'm going to go to the end here will eventually warp spasm into him and that makes him much stronger but unable to block and that's what those white cubes are for to mark his progress uh, before he does that so obviously once that happens this figure goes he comes in and then finally we have uh Neve, his wife, and oh, his son Kai, who is a wizard. I say all the washes are quite nice on this. They definitely helped to bring out the detail. Uh, I'm not so good at painting anymore. I used to be quite good, but my hands won't cut it anymore, which is uh, uh, always a bit of a pain for me because I do like to try and get them painted, but I have to go around the houses. Or lend them out, which means I don't get to play them. So, bit of a one, 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 six, one and a half dozen the other. Sorry, I'm just dropping stuff off camera. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the decks. So, Nikolai Dante's deck, they have um, a little um, reference card. Sorry, couldn't remember what they were called for a minute. And here there's a couple of reference cards. I will show you one later. I'm just going to show Nikolai Dante's. Pretty much, they look nice and uh, they're only going to open one of these. Um, and that one is Schlanz. So, uh, obviously, they've coloured these to go with the bases, make it a little bit easier. So, I might base them up later and do it. And Judge Dread. I think we'll pull Dreads out in a minute. And possibly Johnny Alpha's teams, the Strontium Dogs. Uh, these two are probably going to get a bit of use because, well, it's Judge Red for a start, and both my cousin and myself have a great like of Strontium Dog. Um, love the idea. Sort of like, basically, there were Strontium and Radioactive Showers, and uh, it mutated people, and in a nice, usual, very... Uh, typical fit of racism they were put into ghettos and they were the only way out of the ghettos was to bounty hunt across the galaxy but they've got a lovely selection of um weaponry things like time bombs and that so yeah we've got reference garden which tells you on here how to the defenses for every particular type of attack which is a nice useful visual reference breakdown of the turn always a good thing so that's quite easy uh, this is a breakdown of the types of cards they have um, and what they've got so they're not very very good at special movement they're pretty good at defensive capabilities so quite a tactical team and yeah we've got character cards so we've got mid and face there 
Uh, and all lovely, lovely um, artwork. Uh, yes, I got in a lovely, lovely there for those listening who find humor when I say that a lot. Um, and, well, dead. McNulty. Durham Red. Vampire. And they're basically all the cards. Whoops. Just not knock the camera off. Uh, have a little logo in the top. And what these are for, Wolf Sternhammer, the Gronk. And the cards that you have in your hand, if there's symbols there, it means they can do a move. Now, if it has nothing beside it, they can do any of the basic moves. Um, in this case, things like move or for gather a crystal or that. If they have this line, it means they're linked. So he can use it for a normal move or he can use it to heal someone. That's the Gronk. And Johnny can punch someone if he wishes instead of his using it. So basically the cards are, if their symbol is on it, that character can do something. And you put a card in as an action. Um, so the Durham gets quite a lot of representation, unsurprisingly. Uh, um, and the trick, and now I learned this off Sam Healy, I did a little bit of research and he pointed out that the trick is to look at your character because although the symbol is on the card clearly they also have something on their character that represents this like for example Red's a vampire um, Johnny I believe has a rather large strontium dog badge um, and pretty much Fairly simple, you have a hand of these, no more than I think it's seven. And you go through, you do your actions, and there's uh, some interrupt actions as well, which allow you to pull some surprise manoeuvres. Um, do I have to say, feeling the card, that's really nice quality. Um, we'll possibly get around to sleeving these quite soon as well if I can, just to maintain that, but... On the whole, that's quite nice, just from base. So I'm just going to put those back in the box over there. And I'll open up the Judge Dread ones as well. Uh, let me have a look. There we go. That's actually nice. I normally struggle with these. They've been quite good with the um, quality of the um, wrapping. So that's nice to see. Um... I don't know whether I could say the box could be a little smaller. I think it could have been packed a bit more efficiently. My personal opinion. Um, I just think there's a lot of waste space in the box. And I know they're not going to fit uh, the expansion in here either. From Just from looking at the box. Because where's the dog judges going to go? Um, so this is um, Dred's team. And we have the breakdown again, just a little reminder there. And judges get various other abilities. Uh, Anderson, Hershey and Dread get a high X ability, which means they can fire an explosive round into a square. And they're all, again, not so much on the special movements, very much so... No, on the combat. And basically what these cards do is they show the um, distribution of the cards. So it's a little hand for yourself if you know what's going on. Um, and let's have a look through this. So we've got Judge Giant uh, with his shotgun. He doesn't get a high X round because he's not using the Lawgiver. Uh, Judge Anderson. Um, so... When basically that means whenever you snipe, I shoot, uh, you can optionally hit everyone in the space, including friends. Important to know that. Um, and we have Chief Judge Hershey, as the man himself, chin and all. And uh, that's not the best picture of me, Machine Angel, personally. He, he's gone to seed a bit there. I remember him a bit leaner and a bit more thing, but very typical. Brian Bolland gigantic boots there on um, the artwork. But the artwork is very, very lush, I have to admit. And as I said, 
it's cardboard is good. So anyway, not too much to say. I'm I'm impressed. There will be another unboxing coming up soon uh, because I'm going to undo an unboxing on the um, Dark Treasure as well. And then I'm going to have a play of that particular game and uh, see where things go. Because, um, yeah, this didn't hit my table until I understood there was going to be a solo and I um, was very excited when I found out it was the um, Dark Judges because they've been a particular favourite bad guy of mine. And particularly with the inclusion of Anderson in there, who has a rich history with them. I can see that going really, really, really well. So thank you anyway. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe, like, all the normal things. And um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, this is Cardboard Geek signing off. Thank you very much. Bye.